Sovereign Soros here, welcome to a new video. So today, why is the Britannia the best coin at the moment, but maybe not for you? So in case you hadn't guessed, I am based in the UK. And for me, I therefore think the Britannia is one of the best coins to be stacking. If you are into the one ounce size, we have this. If you're into the smaller, you've got the quarter, the half, and even the 10th and then there's a few which are probably not really for stackers but more novelty like there's uh you know the 40th ounce and things like that so more of a novelty those but like i say for the normal stacker you know bullion coins we have a, a good few sizes there to cater some different budgets so why i think the brit is the best coin particularly for us we have first of all a pound denominated face value this capsule is a bit mur murky, but uh, don't worry, the coin is nice. So we have a £100 face value here. And because of that, it means it is classed as legal tender, aka you could, in theory, spend it in the shops. Um, and at the moment, there isn't tax on selling money. So for that reason, as, as it stands, we are capital gains tax-free. Something like a gold bar or a gold Krugerrand or an eagle or whatever, something like that, in theory would be, uh, you know, creating a capital gains tax liability. So if I buy this for £1,000 a few years ago, I know it's a 22, but if I buy a gold Brit, you know, a few years ago and it was £1,000 and today I sell it for £1,500, I've made £500, but that is capital gains tax free so whilst it's not tax advice that is the the current rule if you were to buy a Krugerrand and make that same 500 pound gain you are using your capital gains tax allowance so maybe if you're flipping something else for you know a bit of a side hustle or extra income then that could be eaten into your allowance as well maybe you've sold some shares that aren't in an ISA you know maybe you've got other business interests etc so you could soon in, eat into, I think it's about £12,000 um, that we have tax-free at the moment. You could soon in, eat into that if you're doing things like property and, uh, you know, other things. So maybe you're selling, you know, an entire gold stack that you built up over the years. It would be an advantage to have capital gains exemption if at all possible. Now, here we have the Yale of Beaufort, which is the Tudor Beast. And this is the same £100 face value as the Britannia so it is treated the same and as are some of these other British coins but like I say not the Krugerrands or Maples or anything like that so if you're not from the UK maybe that is not really a consideration but maybe in your country you do have some tax advantages for certain coins so in America you know for example you might be better off with the Eagles you might have a bit less paperwork and uh, you know over a Maple for example so the other thing to consider is the liquidity. So for us in the UK, like I say, the Britannia, easy to sell. You know, every dealer would take them. And on the second-hand market, very popular. So the new ones, the last couple of years, have a couple of security features which make them more difficult to counterfeit. And for that reason, a lot of people are quite liking them on the second-hand market. You can see this padlock here in the little circle, which transforms into a trident at a certain angle which i can't find there it goes and we've got some very small writing on the rim of the coin which apparently is again hard to copy and then this sort of wave pattern here again uh, another feature that is apparently difficult for counterfeiters so apart from getting the design the weight and the you know size of the coin so the the diameter the weight the thickness etc for that to be correct, you know, you've got to use at least some gold or a material very close to gold to get anything like a close copy. So people are preferring that. Um, we do have obviously some other coins like these, you know, Queen's Beast coins and uh, Tudor Beast coins, like I mentioned. So if you can pick those up at the same kind of price as a Britannia, then I think you might as well because there's a chance that these might, you know, hold a premium in the future. Obviously, if you're buying a dragon at the moment, you're going to be paying that premium anyway. But, um, yeah, if you can get something like this or something like the Royal Arms, you know, at a similar premium, 
then I would probably just pick those up over Britannia's. But a dealer is probably going to give you a similar amount of money for either. And like I say, the Britannia's do have those security features. So for me, it makes sense to pick these up. Um, and obviously they're in other sizes as well. Now, the only other thing being in the UK, we also have the Sovereign. And if you're more into the fractional sizes, I would say pick these up as well. Now, some people aren't as keen because, like I say, they are a little bit easier perhaps to counterfeit. Um, you know, the design's been around for a while and some of these older coins, you know, although they're stunning, uh, people just think that the Britannias are more secure. So, you know, I'll pick these up all day. I know what I'm looking at. Um, most fakes, again, you would, you could see, you know, from across the room, they would stand out. Um, a very, very good fake, you know, it might pass a few of the little tests you can do, but it's not going to pass all of them. So, you know, you're, you're really going to see them if you've handled all of Sovereigns. And obviously, if you're buying from reputable sources, the risk of that is greatly diminished anyway. But, um, yeah, the other thing that you might consider with the Britannias, may, maybe in your country you don't have a national mint that's producing coins. So, obviously, if you're in Canada, you've got the Maple Leaf, America, you've got the Eagle, the Buffalo, etc. But if you're in some of the European countries, okay, Spain started to make a couple, and um, we've even seen Zimbabwe bring a coin out, I think. But a lot of other places, you know, these might be one of the better options, because, again, they might still be lower premiums. And also, I think over in the States, uh, I heard a lot of viewers say that these are coming in very low premium. So perhaps that could be a good reason to pick them up. And, uh, you know, if the usual eagles aren't available, then maybe those would be an option. So some of the reasons why you might not pick a Britannia, like I say, if you have certain tax advantages in your country for picking up something else. If you want the smaller fractional size and you want to pay lower premiums usually, you might prefer the sovereigns and again if you are someone who just doesn't like the design and wants to collect things that you like then maybe the britannia is not for you but like i say a pretty good argument for the britannia for especially if you're in the uk but also some of the other countries as well so let me know what you think would you pick up a britannia where you are or would you pick up something else what are you stacking let me know guys and we'll talk to you on the next one